morning. I didn't pay him enough for saying all that. Um, I, I don't know if you know this, but I've been in for, ministry for 41 years. Um, do you know the pastors that you have here? Um, tell your pastors you love them. Tell Sean and Sonny that you love them, all right? Thanks, man. Um, that introduction I couldn't pay for, but it did remind me of one, and I just got to read. This is exactly how a guy introduced me who knew me for 25 years, and Sean and I have known each other from a distance, but we've just become good friends and just spending time together. We just got a week together, um, maybe hunting some pheasants out in South Dakota, and uh, just an awesome, he's okay shot. But anyways, we had a, we had a good time. They got different guns in Detroit. <laughs> Did I say that? Okay, all right. Um, but it's, it's honest. It's great to be here. But this guy in Colorado, when I spoke, he knew me for 25 years, and I'm just going to read what he said. Today we have with us Bob Lentz. He speaks to half a million people a year. He has spoken in all 50 states and in 41 countries. He's offered six, seven books and one called Dignity Revolution, which is a movement to stand up for the value of every person, which is out in the lobby. He's the president of the Life Promotion, which runs one of the largest Christian festivals uh, in the world called was in Wisconsin. And he said, and I knew Bob when he was still speaking to junior high kids. Would you please welcome Bob Lentz? And I didn't know what to do because I'm still speaking to students in junior high. I, I think he was trying to be nice. I think he was going, Bob's gotten a little better. We can trust him with a real audience now. Adults. Now don't get me wrong, I don't mind speaking to adults <clears throat> much, <laughs> but I still speak to junior high students. Why? Because of this first. Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, it says, Go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching to observe all that I've commanded, and I will be with you even to the end of the earth. That's called the great... One more time. That's called the great... Great Commission. Can I point something out? That's the Great Commission, not the Great Suggestion. All right? That's not a suggestion. That's what we're supposed to be about as Christians. That is our mandate. That's what we're supposed to be about. Um, I, fa I put it on way too late last night, but I loved what your pastor said. He said, we're not about building a church. We're about building the kingdom. And the kingdom is people coming when heaven and earth come together and you make disciples in the name of Jesus when they come to know him and it's more than a religion, it's a relationship and they fall in love with God and because of that they want to change the earth and make it a little more like heaven and bring as many people to heaven as they can. Amen? Amen. Come on, we got to be awake this morning. Here we go. Now, I was a youth pastor seven years before I went on the road full time and... Everyone thinks it's the pastor's job to evangelize. Um, it was a Friday night, and I got a call from a kid in my youth group, and he goes, Pastor Bob, Pastor Bob, you got to come over. I, he said, I have a friend here, and I think he wants to come to Christ. I said, that is awesome, but I'm going to bed. <laughs> he said, you didn't hear me. My friend wants to come to Christ. I said, that's awesome, but I'm only a part-time youth pastor. And I already put in my 60 hours. <laughs> I'm going to bed. He goes, Pastor Bob, you have to come. It's your job. <clears throat> now I was ticked. <laughs> I mean, he's a 16-year-old football player and he was a lineman. Who picks a lineman for first draft? We do. <laughs> All right? But... <laughs> He said, it's your job. So now I don't have just the lead pastor and the elders tell me about what my job is. I have a 16-year-old lineman. And I'm sorry, but I, I think I pulled scripture on him. And I pulled out Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12 that said, to the church God gave teachers, pastors, evangelists, prophets for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. If you don't know how to lead them to Christ, I didn't do my job. Good night. And I hung up on him. Now he was mad. But can I tell you what happened? That next Sunday morning, he walked in to church with a brand new believer by his side. 
right? But guess who led him to Christ? Not me, not the youth pastor, not the evangelist. He did, a 16-year-old student. That's what we need to be about. Do you really believe in the gospel? Do you know what the gospel means? Good news. Good news. That's not what we're known for. It's the best news. So if we really have the best news, I mean, and I'm sorry, I, I am an emotional person and I try not to, when I'm up here, I try to make it about you, but I, if you've been to Life Fest, our MC, Peter Eide, um, passed away two days ago of cancer. He wrote a song called Abba. Abba, I belong to you. Cancer took him out of this world. If you had the cure to cancer, who would you not give it to? Who would you not? But we have the best news for the eternal cancer of sin. And yet, listen to this. Okay, before you clap, hold on. Nine out of 10 Christians, nine out of 10 Christians never lead another person to Christ. Nine out of 10. We think it's Billy, Billy Graham is gone. We think it's the evangelist. You know where I think the problem came, Sean, is during the 70s, the spiritual gift test. How many have taken a spiritual gift to see what spiritual gift? If not, you should take one. But I think one of the problems were, they said that evangelism was a gift. I can't find that in scripture. But even if it was, let's just say it was, right? Um, and you're like, well, I don't have the gift of evangelism, so I don't need to evangelize. Well, pastor, I'm glad that you didn't have the ushers take an offering because I don't have the gift of giving. So I'm not gonna tithe. Let me tell you, you know what's sad? Two to three percent of Christians, evangelical born again Christians, only tithe 10 percent. Two to three percent. I surrender 10 percent. No, you're supposed to surrender all. 10 percent just saying it's all God's. So please, they may not have took an offering here, but every believer, you know, if you're new here, don't, don't, you don't have to give. But everybody else, like, I'm not getting paid to say this. But are we called to all give even though we don't have the gift of giving? Wait, I didn't hear an amen. You didn't clap. Come on, clap. All right? But then listen to this. I, when I grew up in the church, I knew we were supposed to evangelize and I felt bad if we didn't. But at least I knew we were supposed to. Today, 50% of millennial Christians feel it's wrong to share their faith. Because they, we all have our own truth. But please hear me, we're all supposed to be witnesses. All of us. Evangelism, then to look at the scripture, evangelism isn't a gift. You know what scripture says according to Ephesians 4? The evangelist is the gift. You know what that means? I'm your gift. <laughs> You may want to send it back to Amazon or Walmart. But let me tell you this. The gift of the evangelist to equip and motivate the church. I am just coming under Sonny and Sean's authority today to be part of this church for a day because we're one church, one body. But it's our responsibility, all of us. Um, let, me, let me just do it this way. Um, I'm going to come down here. If, sound guy, you okay with that? Lighting guy, good luck. <laughs> but I'm hard to miss. Shut up. <laughs> Somebody will say, you just call me fat? <laughs> I'm a big boy. What's your name? Carter. Carter, are you a believer? Good, otherwise this would have been awkward. <laughs> I would have to lead you to Christ right here. Okay. How old are you? 13. 13. So you're a believer. It's where do you go to school? Parkview. Oh, Terrence was just there this last week, right? You had a speaker. That was my buddy. That's what I do in schools, okay? So Terrence, as far as you can tell, I know we can't judge another person's heart, but as far as you know, are there anybody in Parkview or in Ashwaubenon or De Pere or Green Bay 
that don't know Jesus? Well, right, yes. I'm not putting the whole win the world for Christ on your shoulders. I don't want to guilt you today, but if it really is the best news, just, just tell one. And if you're a believer, that, the gospel is so complex. God is so vast and enormous that the smartest people in the world can't understand it, but it's so simple a kindergarten kid can come to Jesus. So let's not make it too tough. My mom, Carter, before she died of cancer, thanks for clapping, by the way, <laughs> said, if I had a million dollars to give you or Jesus, I'd give you Jesus. And I said, Ma! <laughs> if you had a million dollars and you gave me Jesus instead, you don't love me. Give me the million bucks and pray I find God too. <laughs> and she said, if you want a million dollars, more than Jesus, you don't know how awesome Jesus is. And let me tell you, Carter, I still don't have a million dollars. But if I had the option, I would choose and receive Christ instead and I'd offer it to you. And it's that simple. The Bible says, don't make it complicated. The Bible says, to as many as receive him, Jesus gave you the right to become children of God. It's not being religious enough. It's not known at all. It's a gift. He died. He rose. You believe that and receive. I have a, a new shirt here, and my friend um, Peter wrote a song called Yahweh, and I came up with a little saying. When the world says no way, we say, <laughs> you don't really believe a virgin became pregnant. No way. Yahweh. You believe that he did miracles? No way. Yahweh. And Carter, you believe that 2,000 years ago when he died on the cross, he was thinking of you? No way. And you really believe he rose from the dead? And if you receive him in your heart, you know you're going to heaven and you can live a life, eternal life starts now, not when you die? No way. Yeah. All I want you to do is offer that to your friends. You know, it's fun, that song, is lying inside. There's a lion on here. When the world says no way, Yahweh. It's God's name. I'm gonna share this a little bit at Life Fest this year, but do you know Yahweh? I gotta watch the clock. But Yahweh, watch, go. Take a breath. Did you know that Christianity wasn't something to add to your life? It's why you were made. You try to ride a bike on the water, it doesn't work. It's not something to add to your life. Oh, I'm looking at leadership things, I should add Jesus. No, it's my breath, every breath. Carter, recommit your life to Christ today, but then just share it with one. One person. And then when they have questions, look at the roadmap. It's called the Bible. When they don't know that I can't do this on my own, I got anxiety, I got panic attacks. What am I doing? Just pray with them. And, and when they're saying, I feel all alone, bring them to the, the youth group here. Bring them to church. I mean, come on, this is not a boring church. Bring them in and just hang with them and spend time with them and worship. You know what that's called? Discipleship. So all I'm asking you to do is just one and then for six months, be in the Word, worship with them, pray with them, come to fellowship with them, because you can't do life alone. I saw it on the screen today when I walked in. Just one. And then, after six months, you each take one more, and you share Christ, just that they receive him. It's not hard, otherwise I couldn't do it. Notice he said, I have an honorary doctorate, not a real one. If Bob Lentz can lead somebody to Christ, anybody can. Because it's not us. We don't do one thing. Just offer life. And then after the next six months, you take one. Church, listen, you've got to get this. If we did with one disciple for six months, one more disciple, yeah. here's the number I want you to know for today. In less than 18 years, the whole world would be one to Christ. Come on, come on. 18 years! But here we are, 2,000 years since Jesus came to earth, and less than 18% of students 18 or under in church today. I ask you, is that okay with you? Is that okay? No. no. But people say, Bob, it's not about the church. It's like pastor said, it's about the kingdom. Well, listen to this stat. Four out of five students, 18 or under, don't have a personal relationship with Jesus throughout the world. 
So to come here and just say, well, the music was too loud and this one, come on. We got a commission. We got an assignment. So here's what I want to do. I want to, I want to fulfill the God's word for the great commission. Here's what we got to do. Turn to, to if you want, to, to the Bible in Luke chapter 18. What, what verse? What number do I want you to know? 18. Matter of fact, one of my books out there is 18. Faith for the next generation. I don't usually do this, but I'm asking every single person here to buy one of these books. Every one. Even if you're married, each buy one. Here's why. My wife and I have 14 grandkids. And I have a jet ski and I need some gas. <laughs> I do have 14 grandkids. I do have a jet ski and gas is going up. But my wife came to me and said, Bob, let's not take one penny for any of the books. Let's give it all to go into the public schools and reach the next generation with the message of the gospel. <laughs> Last week, we were just in Hortonville. We had 150 kids receive Christ that night. But four days before we got there, a 16-year-old boy took his life. That's what we're asking you. Luke 18, verse 16 says, Jesus called the children to himself and said, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to the elders. Oh, I'm sorry, I misread it. The kingdom of God belongs to the ordained, the paid staff, the biggest tarther, the worship leader with the skinniest jeans. <laughs> Okay, sorry. The kingdom of God belongs to these. Here's the premise. I, I'm way behind, but you gotta hear me. Here's what I want. Here's what I believe God is saying. Will you, first I gotta ask a question. If not, we're done. Will you obey God? Trust and obey, right? Will you, do you wanna fulfill the great commission? If so, raise your hand right now. You'll be a part in your life, in your school, in your work, in your community, in your state. Here's what we are. All right, so here it is. Here's what we gotta do. If we're gonna fulfill the Great Commission, we have to refocus or focus on youth like this church already does, but we need to increase it for three reasons. Number one, two out of three people who come to Christ who call themselves Christians, two out of three will come to Christ before the age of 18. Every time I go somewhere, youth workers are always like, well, I'm serving as youth pastor, but I really wanna be a lead pastor. You go where God's called. It's not a stepping stone. I was at one church, it was a smaller church. I said, how many people that were in worship today? They said, about 100. I said, it looked like more than that. They said, we don't count children. Did children matter to Jesus? Should they matter to us? Yes, I was at another church and they called it a mega church. Don't get afraid of that word. It just means big. This is a mega shirt. Right? And they release their kids right after the first song, which is cool. I'm not talking about a style. There's different ways. But I asked somebody, I said, why do they release the children after the first service, the song? They said, so the adults can enjoy the service. I said, oh, so it's babysitting. They said, no, no. It's free babysitting. Please hear me. First of all, it's not the church's responsibility to win or disciple your kids. It's mom and dad first. That's what it is. A good church will come alongside and have a program like they do here to help you. But that's whose responsibility. Real quick, there's a guy in my, my church, great worship guy. He was in two bands, cover bands, and the other, he plays all over. But he goes, God, I, Bob, I think God's calling me to play with the worship team. Uh, for church, I'm like, that's awesome. He goes, yeah, that's what I thought. But the elders wouldn't even let me play on Sunday morning on the stage. They want me to play for the children's church. He said, what an insult. He said that to the wrong guy. After I hit him, I'm, I'm just kidding. Carter, I'm a Christian. I helped him up. <laughs> I said, an insult, what a privilege. 
What a responsibility. What a joy. Please hear me. Some of the most important roles are Sunday school teachers, vacation Bible school teachers, youth group leaders. That's where it's at. Why are churches start like this? They plateau and they die. Because we forget about the next generation. So here's what we gotta do. Number one, we're gonna refocus on youth. Why? Two out of three people come to Christ before the age of? Number two, the enemy is targeting this group. Real quick, Leviticus, guess what chapter? When's the last time you did a study on Leviticus? Leviticus 18 says, do not give any of your children to be sacrificed to Moloch. Remember that name. For by you'll profane the name of the Lord your God. The end, reason number two, to focus on youth to fulfill the Great Commission, the enemy is targeting this group. When I go into public schools, I can't start with a prayer or a scripture, so we start embarrassing moments. And we get people to laugh. But I was at a camp, and so I collect them all over, and this 16-year-old, I don't know what his football guys like me, they're like, I have an embarrassing moment, like, tell, I'll put it in my next book. They're like, mine's not funny. I said, what is it? He said, two weeks before I came to camp, I found out my parents were getting divorced. Bob, I know it happens to a lot of people, but it still hurts. And I'm a big football player, and I just couldn't stop crying. 50% of youth under 18 say they weekly suffer from depression or sadness and hopelessness. He said, but one of my friends was there for me. That's community. That's discipleship. I thought I was doing pretty good until two days before I came to camp. My dad came to me and said, the reason him and mom were getting divorced is he found a new younger girlfriend and he wanted to start a new life with her. He said, I talked to your mom and she says she can handle the girls, your two sisters, but she doesn't think she can handle you. And I just really want to start a new life with my new girlfriend. So we called social services. And we're seeing if we can get foster, foster care until you're 18. He said, Bob, you know how embarrassing it is to tell your friends your parents are in court because neither of them want you? Christian, what do you tell them? When I was writing this, I thought it's so easy right now to just yell at the world for all the worldly things. But instead, the Holy Spirit hit me. When my daughter was younger, she said, Daddy, why do you like speaking more than being with us? I said, because they clap. Last week, I got a standing ovation from high school students. If just once when I came home, your mom and you'd get up off that couch, stand up and applaud, I would come here more. <laughs> I didn't say that, obviously. But it did teach me this. As a family, we will sacrifice. But we will not sacrifice our family. Moloch. Moloch was a god in the Old Testament, had a body of a human, a head of a bull. I just wonder if that could represent Wall Street. No, I'm not an Occupy Wall Street guy, but I'm tired of Christians bowing down to the almighty dollar. And you would have to sacrifice. They didn't even, I love that you didn't take an offering, because even though I said you should off, you should give, they're not about your money. That's not why they're here. But in that church, you had to go and put, look it up on Google. Moloch, he was a god of fire. You had to put your kid in, and it would roll down and it would burn. Moms, could you imagine the cries? The smell? So you know what they would do? They'd play the drums louder and louder so they wouldn't hear the cries. You're like, what a wicked generation that was. We would never do that. You know what I think our drum is? Every single day in America, 1,800 students under 18 attempt suicide. 18 a day, here's when I hate 18. 18 completed every day and it's up 300% since COVID. And our busyness is our drum. We don't even have time for a dinner with our family. It's time. The enemy's targeting, last one, so here we go. We will fulfill the Great Commission 
by refocusing on youth. Three reasons. Number one, two out of three people come to Christ before the age of? Number two, the enemy is? I didn't hear that. The enemy is? And number three, it's the heart of Jesus. One more verse. This one comes. I think it's Matthew. Let me look. I've been not watching this. <laughs> it's in Matthew. Put it up on the screen. Let's see what it is. Here it is. What is, what is it? Matthew chapter what? 18. Whoever welcomes one of the such children welcomes me. Now look at verse 6. If anyone causes one of these little ones to stumble, it'd be better for them to have a millstone hung around their neck and thrown in the depths of the sea. Those are heavy words. And you know who said them? Jesus. You know I can tell? They're in red. <laughs> but for the author of life to say it'd be better to be drowned, those are all in words. Jesus came not to be served, but to seek and to save the lost. And if we're gonna do that, we need to go after the children. Businessman or woman, if two thirds of your business came from one area, would you neglect that area? Would you tolerate it, roll your eyes, talk about it when nobody's around? Or would you cherish, develop, invest in? Two out of three people come. Can God reach somebody after 18? Of course. But if two out of three come to the Christ by the age of 18, shouldn't we focus on that? Can I tell you nationally what the average is for a church budget that goes towards the youth? Less than 15%. So I wonder if we're not trying to fulfill our commission, but we just want to please adults so they keep coming. Will you join me in winning the next generation? World missions, I just came back from Africa. World missions, the whole purpose is to win the loss for Christ. Less than 10% of world mission money goes to students 18 or under. Dude, there's broken hearts in here because your own kids have walked away after being baptized when they went to college. There's grandparents like me that are watching going, what do I gotta do to pray to get my kids? I'll end with this story real quick. I was in Pennsylvania and I met with a bunch of pastors in this Methodist group, a church that started by putting himself on fire and letting people come and watch John Wesley. But they were dying and they had a youth gathering. They had about 100 kids come and they had prayer meetings and they had, they had just music and fun and Bible studies and the students were loving it and they were junior high students and it was locking so they didn't sleep and they gave them Red Bull, let's pray. But the kids wanted to be in there. And some of the kids leaned on the door because they wanted the front seats and the lock on the door broke. And one of the kids broke the rule and took a soda into the sanctuary and spilled it on the carpet. And they had to spend $35 on a new lock. And they had to get the whole carpet washed. So the elders got together and said they couldn't have the youth gathering there the next year. When I speak to youth, I speak about respect of elders, of authority, of the police, of the, right? About property. But with that said, I hope Life Church has the most broken doors and the dirtiest carpet of any church. Because you're putting your money where your mouth is. In closing, I'm going to ask you will you join the Great Commission by refocusing on youth? But Bob, I'm too old. I'm not cool. My daughter said when I got my first tattoo Dad, you're a Christian. You're supposed to be an example. She said, Besides, you're not cool. You never were. <laughs> so don't try to be. She said, Bob, they don't, she said, Dad, they don't need you to be cool. They need you to love them. Some of you think you're too old. Just go and hang out with them. How do you know if you really care about what God cares about? Where's your time, your talents, and your treasure? They want to send kids to camp here this summer. Some of you are sending your kids and you can afford it. 
It's $300. There's 60 scholarships that need to be filled. Would some of you stand up, not stand, but would you stand up and go, hey, pastor, I'm in. They need volunteers in the kids' ministry. They need volunteers in the youth ministry. Will you do it? Let's pray. Father God, right now, God, if I stepped on toes, I hope it was in love. Because all I want is for our kids and our grandkids to know you. All I pray for is for us to be a part. It's not on our shoulder. It's not on Carter's shoulder. All we gotta do is work with you and be a vessel. If God has spoke to you and you said, I wanna be all in, like Texas hold them. I'm all in, like Jesus' word. I'm all in. I will live for the great commission by refocusing on youth, because two out of three come before 18. The enemy is targeting them, and I'll stand in the gap, and I'll have the heart of Jesus for this world. If that's you, one more time, would you raise your hand? Yeah. Father, something special here at Life Church. Add to the fire. Add to the fire. May we live that out. Please, in your name. Amen. One thing, I'm four minutes over. Pray that they let me speak at the next service. Life Fest looks big, and it is, but we want people to know Jesus. So we're doing a thing called Extend the Impact this year. And these are not for you to come, but if you have some in your family or a neighbor or person at work that you want to come to Christ, Thursday night of Newsboys, we have We the Kingdom Newsboys. And I'm gonna be sharing the Yahweh salvation message during the Newsboys concert. It's a $48 ticket. Will you go buy a ticket for 40? No, I'm not. I'm gonna try to put our money where our mouth is. These are free. We've printed. We have hundreds and hundreds of tickets. Go to our booth on the way out and say, I would like a ticket to how many you want to give to people for Thursday night. I want to see the pier at Schwabenen, Green Bay, Swamico have a revival but it's got to mix with our prayer for the lost, for the kids. God bless you. Continue to live out the gospel for Jesus. As we journey through life, we all have opportunities to be generous. Because you are generous with your time, talent, and resources, together we can be generous by creating engaging in-person experiences, live online services, and fresh virtual resources so that thousands of people on the 920 and beyond can experience the life-changing message of Jesus every single week. Your tithe and above and beyond giving of any amount make it possible to create above and beyond experiences that point to the generosity of God. Online giving is safe, simple, and secure. Reoccurring giving makes it even easier. Together, let's be generous.